Hey guys, it's me, your faithful host, Let's Play Dark Souls HD, and welcome back to our in-depth playthrough of Elden Ring. So today we're going to start episode 6, and we've come pretty far. Today is a big deal because we have found the Round Table Hold. And there are some important NPCs here, quest lines and stuff like that that we're going to start and or continue, and there are some other important things about this hub that uh, we're going to explore, and it will take up the majority of the beginning of this episode, so... Feel free to skip forward if you want to, if you know everything there is to know about this place. But uh, other than that, I'm going to get started with this guy. Oh, I see you've just arrived. Welcome to the Round Table Hold. I'm Corin, a man of the cloth. I teach incantations, the strength granted us by the two fingers, and explore the secrets of the Golden Order, so that one day... If a tarnished of the Round Table Hold should become Elden Lord, I might counsel them, ensuring order regains its proper form, writing rule over men. By the way, do you still see it? The Guidance of Grace. So answering no to this question, I believe, will halt him here. But if you say yes and you do see it, uh, not only will he start becoming your vendor for incantations, but you can start giving him the different books that unlock more incantations, the, the prayer books they're called. And uh, it will cause him to leave eventually. He's going to go on a quest out into the Outless, the Outless Altus, I believe, Altus Plateau. And uh, he's going to be in search of the Gold Face, who is one of the Tarnished that's mentioned in the beginning cutscene. You do? Wonderful news. Most Tarnished are blind to it these days. You are something of a rare breed. Well, what do you say? Care to learn an incantation of the Two Fingers? Okay. Now, he does not have anything, like, super powerful in the beginning. Like this, I definitely want. But uh, a lot of these, I don't really think I need. The Cure Poison is good, but we're going to buy the book that allows us to create the item, so I don't really need that one. Rejection is basically just Force from Dark Souls. And then you have Fire and Magic Damage Negation, and it does increase your resistance to these two things significantly if you cast these. But then there's Regular Heal. I'm going to buy the regular heal because it's much better than the urgent heal. We're going to replace it. May the golden order shine through you. Further study of incantation. I can happily spare. Okay, so he doesn't have any additional dialogue. Before we do anything else, I'm going to stop staring at me, Gideon. All right, we're going to go to Memorize Spell, get rid of that, replace this with Heal, and replace our stealthy one with Fireball. Okay, now we're going to talk to Gideon just to get this shit out of the way. Oh, this is a rare occasion. I can't remember the last time a new Tarnished made their way to the round table. Very well. As your senior, I bid you welcome. It is safe here. You may let down your guard. And he's right, because you can't actually attack here. Like, you hear me mashing the button. There's nothing you can do to cause any sort of violence in this place unless you jump over the ledge where the chandelier is. But we'll talk about that in a minute. Allow me a word of advice. As your senior, you are a mere visitor to the round table. Nothing more. A house guest. Yet to earn their keep. Remember your place, newcomer. I mean, I don't get it. This is kind of a shithole. Like, who the hell would want a room in here? There's nothing left to say. Be at your leisure. So Gideon, the all-knowing, he's the very last tarnish that was mentioned in the cutscene. Uh, you'll recall. And Gideon, the all-knowing. So, that's him. He's got a thing for ears, as he was bathing in a pool of them in that cutscene. And the weapon that he's using was being held by what looked to be a stone imp. Well, I don't know what that means, but it's something to think about. Gideon, 
He may look like this decrepit old dude that can't even stand up without his damn walking stick, but don't believe it. He's super fucking dangerous. Ah, hello. You must be new here. I'm, well, just call me Dialos. The honor of one's house holds little import in these lands. By the way, have you met a young woman named Lanya on your travels? She's my servant, but fickle as the wind. Take your eyes off her for but a moment and she's good as gone. If you find her, please be sure to tell me. Be sure to tell me if you meet a young woman named Lanya. She's a servant to my house. She's been my companion since childhood. I've lost count of the number of times I've had to find her like this. Honestly, she's such a little tomboy. So finding her is literally the only way to push this guy's quest line forward. Like, for the longest time I was unable to locate her on my original playthrough, and it was seriously a pain in the ass. I don't believe we've met. I'm known as D. I hunt down those who live in death and weed their death root. Heed my warning. Those who live in death should be left well alone. All the more should you spy a mariner among their number. Unless you wish to lay down your life in vain. Okay, so that sounded slightly hostile, right? Um, he's not a bad guy. You can actually find this guy out in the field on the way down to where the Mariner is. And uh, I did not stop and see him down there. I probably should have first, but you end up finding him here at the round table regardless. Those who live in death should be left well alone. All the more should you spy a Mariner among their number. Those who live all the more. Okay, so he can actually end up becoming a vendor as well. He will sell you some incantations um, of holy nature, but we'll worry about his stuff later. We need to go find him out in the world and talk to him there first. And then once you get Gideon to actually talk, this will open up and be his study and he'll be in there. This person... gives you the gesture that they're doing right now they don't talk at all nothing i have done has gotten this person to talk like carvings gestures i have probably wasted more hours in this spot than i'm ever willing to admit trying to get this person to fucking do something all they end up doing is invading you and then here's finger maiden so you can offer bell bearings to them. We don't have any at the moment, but when you offer bell bearings, it increases what you can get from them. So I want this, the memory stone. This is going to increase our memory slots just by having it. Seriously, that's literally all it takes. You just have to have it. And uh, I, well, this is strange. Why do I feel like this is different than what I remember? I'm pretty sure you were supposed to be able to buy something here that increases your HP as well. Like a, a red medallion that increases your max HP? Maybe they changed that in the patch. I'm not sure. Maybe I already have it. No, I don't. This is the only one I have. Interesting. Okay. And then that door through there, that's not going to open up until the loathsome dung eater shows up. Don't go down here. Like, we're going to get, like, Roger right there, and maybe one more person right here, but don't jump over this ledge. There's an invader down there that is super duper hard to kill. And here's our blacksmith. But before we talk to the blacksmith... Greetings, great champion called by grace. I am Fia. Circumstances have compelled my stay at the round table hold. Great champion, would you allow me to hold you? But briefly, perhaps you might share with me some of your lively vigor and your stout-heartedness. Doing so will grant me the warmth of a champion. 
And you, I am sure, will bear a Balderkin's blessing. Do you think it vulgar, perhaps? Where I come from, it is a sacred act. Okay, so, <laughs> Fia wants to have unprotected hugging with you. Um, she is also in the cutscene. She is considered one of the heroic tarnished. So, two out of the group are here, both Gideon and Fia. You can say no, and all you do is not progress her questline, which is fine. She's, I mean, it's whatever. But if you let her hold you, she will give you the Baldekin's Blessing, which is a consumable item. It's not reusable, it's one-time use, but you'll get one every time you hug her. The problem is, for every second that you carry that item in your inventory, you lose 5% of your maximum HP, which can be quite a bit in the beginning. It could be the difference between that last hit that either kills you or allows you to win a fight. So you make that decision for yourself because the only thing you get for using that item is a bunch of poise that's temporary. So I'm going to do it. Oh, my thanks, great champion. And I did not really progress her quest line very far in my playthrough. I'm going to do things slightly differently this time and check a few different places periodically to see what I can do to further her quest line. Very warm. But I'm hoping I can figure out what happens with her. What you felt light up inside you was a Baldekin's blessing. Though it is but a fleeting thing, I am afraid. Come back to me, should you require another. I will take you in my arms as often as you need. Shoot, you keep talking to me like that, and all I'm going to have is a bulge and a blessing. Yeah, it was, uh, it was good seeing you. You should, uh, you should do this again. This gentleman is the blacksmith. Your new face, no matter... It's all the same. Lay out your arms. Let's get smithing. So, crazy enough, he is shackled to the wall by his ankle. This guy's not going anywhere. Let's ask about it. I see you've noticed the chains. Nothing special. I'm a prisoner and these are my chains. I'm trapped by the hole. I'm dying smithing for you fools. That's all there is to it. <coughs> Excuse me. Choking on my cold brew coffee. Alright. So, we can strengthen our armaments beyond level 3 now. Wonderful. I don't have enough, though. So, we reached the maximum that we can go off of the level 1 smithing stone. So, you need 2, and then 4, and then 6. You always need a total of 12, all the way up through... The tier 8 stone, which goes into like, I mean, this weapon will go up to level 25, if that tells you anything. So now, we're going to need 2, and then 4, and then 6 of the tier 2 stone. And then we will need 2, and then 4, and then 6 of the tier 3 stone. And so on and so forth, all the way up through 9 different tiers of smithing stones. And don't worry, we're going to find them. There's plenty of them. But, let's see... Yeah, I'm likely going to end up wasting mine on these again, because, like, here's the thing. I'm really torn over this, guys. I love this weapon. I fucking love it. It's so good. But it really does make the experience significantly easier when you use it. So I'm thinking about resisting the urge to use this weapon and just going full-on dexterity and faith. That might be a viable option for this character. I think I might end up doing that, but aside from any of that, we're just going to continue his dialogue because there's not much else he can do for us. No, don't read too much into it. Well, no grudge against you. My being a prisoner is no fault of yours. Besides, I don't mind smithing. Despite my differences, the weapons get stronger all the same. Even time, technique, Never fails. Besides, it helps me forget. The sheer terror of her. 
There we go. There's that juicy bit of dialogue. So this guy, it sounds like he has Stockholm Syndrome initially. Like, oh, I'm, I'm a happy prisoner as long as I do what I'm told. Right? But no. It turns out that he really does have a purpose for being here. He is horrified of something or someone. He refers to them simply as her. And we're going to dive deeper into that as we continue the playthrough. And we'll keep, con we'll keep uh, continuing his dialogue and furthering what he has to say. And eventually, we might find out who he's talking about. So you can duplicate Ashes of War at the Blacksmith. So if you find an Ash of War that you really, really like and you want it on multiple weapons at the same time in your inventory instead of switching it out at the Grace, you can do that. And it costs a Lost Ash of War and those are limited per playthrough. And we'll find plenty of them, so no worries. The game gives you plenty of opportunities to do this. We just haven't found one yet. And you're also able to switch your Ashes of War at the Blacksmith, just like you can the Sight of Grace. So I think the reason they did that, if it seems redundant, is if you can do it at the Grace, why be able to do it at the Blacksmith? I think it's because of this. If you duplicate it, instead of running to the Grace, you can go straight to your Ashes of War and you can equip the thing you just duplicated. So it's like a, a yin-yang type thing. Cannot go through there. That's the room that's going to open up for D's quest line. The guy that says, those who live in death should be left well alone. This will not open. And down here, we have a room that requires a stone sword key. So, here's the thing. Some of these require more than one. And when I look at them, I really don't have a way of telling which ones it is. But... <clears throat> we have four. So let's see how many were used. Stone Sword Key was lost with use. So that one only cost one. Alright. Now this door is worth opening right at the beginning of your playthrough because of this. Yeah. Crepus Black Key Crossbow. And then we got Black Key Bolts. So, let's take a look at this thing. It's kind of heavy. It's a five unit crossbow, like our short bow weighs half that, just to give you an idea. But this thing's long. Black crossbow featuring a long stock. Used for sniping, it has a very long range. Weapon of crepus or crepish? I think it might be pronounced like an SH sound. But crepish, who served the two fingers from the shadows of the round table as the head confessor. What do you think of that? We're a confessor. And now we're using the Head Confessor's crossbow. And it has the kick skill. So this thing needs 14 strength. And that's fine. We're going to level our strength up gradually. I might even waste runes leveling it up right now. <laughs> just so we can uh, do that. But uh, we have a little bit of leveling up to do as it is. We're at 21 dexterity. Our goal is 24 to use our next main weapon. Which is also a flail. Just a different one that's better. And uh, check this thing out. I just want to show this thing to you guys. Look at that. I mean, look at it. Yeah, we're going to be using that once we're able to. Well, I should probably put this on. I don't need a torch right now. All right. And now the question is, see, I, and this one looks like it needs two because it's different. Like, maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's. If the heads are glowing, like, because we can see the stone sword key that I put into this thing, the single one. The one on the bottom already had one. Neither of them have one on this one, so maybe this one requires two. We have three. Let's find out. Yep, there's two. Okay. But it still says one, and it still only asks you for one key, so it's still <laughs> unclear about it. Whatever. There we go, the Assassin's Prayer Book. So we're going to give this thing to our guy upstairs that teaches us the incantations. The Corinth is his name, I believe. We're going to read the description first, though. So, Prayer Book of the Round Table holds assassins. Can be given to a learned cleric to gain access to the following incantations, Assassin's Approach, and Darkness. So, this is not, like, super important. I wouldn't say you have to prioritize this in your playthrough. Where's the girl? Usually she's supposed to be right here, or somewhere nearby. 
Anyway. Ah, well then. We have the option to give him the prayer book now. So let's do that. That is a work of heresy. Its incantations bear no lineage from the earth tree. <sighs> do it. Well. I'll take it off your hands. Yeah, that's it. Just give him the old Palpatine. If he gives you any lip and says, that's bad book, just do it. All right. I don't have enough for it, but this one in particular. This is what I would recommend working towards darkness. So this ability. An incantation of the two finger servants who once served as the assassins of the round table hold creates a veil of darkness that conceals the caster. This incantation can be cast while in motion or crouching. The assassins were themselves once tarnished who had strayed from guidance, and they pursued their duty in the darkness that is without grace. This ability is heavily underrated. It's very good. Once I have enough, uh, what you call it, faith to use this ability, I'm going to show you guys what I mean. So I'm going to buy it, even though we can't use it. It's a waste of money right now, but I'm going to buy it just so I don't forget. And we just purchased, or we just purchased the... Uh, the pendant that gives us another spell slot, so we don't have to worry about leveling up, or we don't have to worry about trading anything we already have for it. We can still have our fireball, and we can still have our heal ability, and we just got the thing from the merchant that gives us an extra spell slot, so we have three now, and we can equip that as soon as we have the amount of faith we need, which is 18. So that's four points of faith. That's going to be a minute away, but once we get into like Storm Veil and stuff like that, areas where you really have to be sneaky... I'm going to show you some killer applications of that spell. May the golden order shine through you. I forgot my sunblock. So I only have 275 runes. It's a perfect opportunity to show you why you don't go down here. So before we get our asses completely kicked, we may as well go grab this item, which this is going to be yet another item that we won't be able to use for a long time. So, we got invaded by Mad Tongue Alberic, and we picked up the Cypher Pata, which is a fist weapon that is pure holy damage. It's kind of cool. So this guy is terrible. He's very, very hard to beat. That Scythe hits hard. Yeah. Hey, bad news, like... You really don't want to fuck with this guy. He'll kill you in one hit. I mean, you can dodge his little magic attacks or whatever, but... Ooh! <laughs> yeah, this guy is, like, bad. I don't, uh... I don't recommend trying to fight him unless you have nothing to lose, which, in our case, we really don't. I mean, 275 runes is nothing. I can pop a rune item and get that back, like, right now. But, I'm trying to think. I wonder if I can use this to beat him. Let's see if the weapon art actually works, if I don't have the stats for it. It does! Alright. Maybe we can bleed him to death. Come out, come out. Ow. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put my flail back on. Alright. Yee! And see, he's got like some kind of crazy magic damage going through that scythe because even though I blocked it, it still hit really hard. I'm pretty sure it's magic infused. Oh shit, I missed. So this guy is like hard to hit because he likes to jump attack. Ooh. And he's really nimble. He's great at dodging. <laughs> yeah, this guy, he's bad news.
So there's your quick preview of Alberic. He's uh, Alberich. I don't know if you actually pronounce it like CH at the end, but uh, yeah, you don't want to mess with that guy. I gave it two solid attempts, and uh, I wouldn't recommend actually trying to beat him until you get to a point where you can at least survive two hits from him, because I ended up beating him relatively early on my other character, like right around the same level as we are now, but I have Halberd, so totally different fight. All right, and then through there, that's not going to unlock until we beat Godric the Grafted. So, there is your big rundown of the Roundtable Hold. We've talked to everybody here, and uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to get back to the action. So, what we're going to do in this episode is since we've cleared all of this, like, western area and the lakes and stuff like that, or at least a good portion of it, I'm going to go back here into the Limgrave Tunnels because... We did miss a room, and uh, I was meant to grab this room in part 5. And it's just a couple extra smithing stones. It's nothing, like, super huge, but uh, it's something I want to go get. It's worth showing to you guys, because I want to try to cover as much as I can in this playthrough. I bet the rats are still following me. I don't trust it. Okay, so it's going to be on the one where we could have jumped off early. That right there. So we want to take it all the way to the bottom this time. Make sure there's no items off to the sides. Okay, so there is going to be a spot down here with some dogs. We will sneak. There's two of them. There's one in the building right there. It looks like he's eating something. And then there's another one sitting over here somewhere. There he is. You. Come here. Now the other one got aggroed, but totally fine. Not fine that that guy woke up. Block. Repel. go these guys are weak to strike damage no problem beast blood all right we want this the large glintstone scrap we got five of them so you remember i mentioned that there are different tiers of these items this one is the weakest tier and this one is the stronger tier that does more damage you break this it costs more fp to use but it creates stronger magic bolts Right, another smithing stone. I swear this looks like a fake wall, man. Like, it should have been. We got one more back here. And again, these are tier ones. They're not like super duper duper important, but I wanted them. Now, we're going to make our way down here to Aguil Lake South, and we're going to start pushing our way south down the main road. Okay. And there it is. Stormvale. And we're going to be dealing with all that bullshit soon enough. I, you know, I talk negatively about it, right? Like, it's it sounds like I'm dreading it. Hmm. Wanted to get a look at that guy. I saw him running by and I didn't know if it was a regular enemy or... I thought it was another Knight's Cavalry. It scared the shit out of me. Anyway, um... I talk about that place as if I really don't like it and I'm dreading it, but... I'm not, I promise. <laughs> I'm, uh, honestly, I'm pretty excited for it. So let's go up here real quick. So we did all of this. This is where those annoying mages are. We picked up our first Starlight Shard there. And I'm just getting up here to get some high ground so I can really give you guys an idea of what it is we're going to do. Like, I'm going to sh give you guys a visual of the plan. Okay. Torrent's head is kind of in the way. So, this is the main road, and this barricade blocks the main road. This is where we're going to go. There's a uh, ballista there, or arbalists, whatever you want to call them. They shoot giant explosive bolts. They suck. And the goal is to get to the grace right there. So, we're going to fight our way through this bridge, which is not 
Not as simple as it looks, I promise you that. We're gonna grab the grace, and then there's a little bit we can do up through here, like we might do some platforming and uh, run down that way. I mean, you can skip the bridge altogether if you take this way, right? Like that is a clear path to the other side that doesn't involve having to fight through these guys. That would probably be a smarter thing to do because there's nothing like down here to pick up. Like there's nothing other than a giant ambush waiting for you if you try to take it on face first. So we probably will take that way. And then up in these trees right here, there's going to be some items we can grab over there. And then we're going to go further downhill underneath this giant piece of rubble. And if you go up around through the side there, there's uh, some items near these giant tombstones as well. We'll check that out. But uh, ideally what we're trying to do is we're trying to push all the way down through the main road until we get way back there where the fort is. And eventually we're going to dead end at the ocean and uh, we're going to be at a castle. It's called Castle Morn. So that is kind of our goal for this episode. We're going to start pushing closer towards Castle Morn. Okay. Let's begin. So we'll jump down into the spring without dying, right? And we'll jump over to the other side. And I was saving this boss because there's an NPC quest line that I want to do. And in order to activate that quest line, there's a certain place we have to get to first. But it's okay, because it's going to be towards the area that we're pushing towards. So now all we have to do is ooh, another Trina's Lily. Now all we have to do is platform our way down safely and smartly. And uh well <laughs> I had a great idea. I thought it was gonna connect, but uh they showed me. Anyway. Okay, we have another spring right here, and yep, it looks like there's I mean, you can get around if you go the long way, it looks like, but I think that might be what we have to do. Okay. It's not inconceivable. It seems pretty doable still. Why not? And then we can use that to get back up if we need. I wonder. I wonder if that thing would get me all the way across. I have... Like, no runes, it's honestly worth risking, <laughs> because I like experimenting and finding new ways to do stuff all the time. Okay, so, here's the leader. Let's take this guy out. Okay, we'll get rid of that guy. What are you going to do, man? You hit like a bitch. Come here. Okay, we'll get this item. The Large Club. A classic. Are there any veterans watching? <laughs> what do they call this thing, huh? What do I call this thing? I want to hear you say it. In three, two, one. The Bonk. That's right. This thing is so good. Oh, it's good. Yeah. Too bad we're not going to use it. Not on this character. I've decided to go Dexterity. I'm not portraying the Bonk, I promise. There is a Dexterity version of the Bonk. You'll see. Or hell, we can even put an Ash of War on it that makes it scale with Dexterity. Either way, we can make it work. Damn, this thing's good, man. Okay, what do we have? Just a few more demi-humans over here, nothing special. Just want to make sure we're not uh, skipping over any items, anything like that. This is where the battle was taking place, so we've already seen this. Looks like they're still fighting, and that's where Yura is. We talked to him after beating the dragon, and he told us about dragons using their power is bad, and will explode, make you miserable and cursed. Whatever. Okay. Is 
So it looks like the only thing between us is a big old gorge. There's another giant flower over there. Okay. So maybe there's not a way to get around. I mean, not that it matters, because... You know... Like, you didn't even have to hide. It doesn't matter. Not that you had any increased odds of beating me. What the hell were you thinking? Anyway. Definitely can't make that jump. Not even gonna try. It looks like there really is no way to get across. It doesn't look like. So, not that it matters because that bridge is not super duper challenging, but I feel like it was worth it to at least try and run over here to see if there was a way to get over there without going over the bridge. It doesn't look like there is. Um, there's a cave right there. That little tree right there, that little spirit tree. Let me look at it real quick. If you go to that tree and activate it, a guy will lead you through the forest here and he'll lead you down this ledge that goes to that cave. The boss in that cave is the big ass murder bear straight from your nightmares. We're not gonna worry about that right now. We will uh, worry about it later. And uh, I think it's interesting to note that those guys are disguising themselves as the trees that Bach was disguised as. What the hell was that that just fell? Who's kicking skulls off the mountain? I don't like it. Okay. So let's get ourselves back up here. And now it's time to get across this bridge actually start kicking some ass today. Let me pick up these mushrooms every time I see them, because I do enjoy my fire pots. Okay. Jump down here. Then here. It's relatively pain painless. We'll investigate the bottom here just to make sure that we're not missing any items or anything like that, which I don't think we are. Like, this should dead end. Okay, yes, and then it goes down to the lower plateau, and... okay. Yep. Alright. And then if we go down through here, it'll lead us to the Mistwood Ruins. Okay. So yeah, we don't have the map for this section. I'm not going to go that way just yet, near like where the Mistwood is. Uh, we are actually going to go south first. So we're going to stay the path. Okay. This part's kind of a pain in the ass. Let me lure this guy over here. Let's get rid of these guys first. Okay. Then we'll get rid of that guy next. And what we'll do is we'll make some more throwing items. Which, I mean, I, I really could use my bow like a smart person. Why wouldn't I, you know? Okay, so now we don't have these guys out in front of us, but we're going to stay behind this thing. Woo! <laughs> that did not work out how I wanted to at all, <laughs> but here's what you want to do. I want to get over here, kill this guy as fast as possible. Kill these guys as they jump up. Easy peasy. And you can attack this thing until it breaks. Like, I still have yet to figure out why they incorporated that feature into this game. Like, you can't use them. So, I mean, why can you break them? We got another stone sword key. Hell yeah. I mean, I don't know. I suppose 
the appeal comes from uh, making sure that nothing else can wield them. And we got a, we got a Lord Sworn Straight Sword, which is just the typical weapon that the Godric Knights use. There's nothing special about it. And here, I want to point this out before we go too far past any of this. Let's make sure I don't get attacked. There's no enemies. Okay. These look like Godric soldiers. These look like the people that are fighting right now. So I don't know why they're hanging. Uh, maybe this was done by the enemy. when they Maybe they lost control of this post and the enemy did this. And by the enemy, I mean the demi-humans. And maybe they re-seized control and just didn't cut their buddies down. I'm not sure what happened. All I know is that from a lore perspective, when you try to figure out the storytelling of what's going on right now, it really doesn't make sense that those guys will be hanging from that because once you get to this spot, those are the guys that are technically in control of the post. And they wouldn't hang their own guys, right? I mean, not sure. So what we're going to do is, I completely forgot about this, but we found a golden seed. So we can add a charge to our flask. We don't have any more. We don't have any sacred tears either. But we will. We will. So I'm going to push mm, pretty far towards Castle Morn, but we're not actually going to go in. Once I reach Castle Morn, I'm going to stop and turn back and go towards the Mistwood. It's going to look kind of strange how I'm doing things, but you'll see what I'm doing and it'll make sense afterwards. So we have another NPC right here. And then we have these dead Godric soldiers. It looks like we're about to be on the verge of another battle. Hello? Is somebody there? Might I bend your ear for a moment, please? My name is Arena. I've escaped from Castle Morn to the south. The servants there have rebelled. I... I can't be sure what it is. My eyesight's been weak since birth, you see. But I swear I heard frightful howling from all over. My good father secreted me out the castle, but decided himself to stay. He says it's his duty. As commander. That's funny. <laughs> she said her dad um, secreted her out of the castle, which, like, I don't know. It's a secretion sounds like, <laughs> I don't know. It sounds like she was sweat through the walls like a liquid. But um, I know she means that it means that she was um, she was removed from the castle in secret. But it's just like when I hear somebody say, like if somebody told me, like, how did you get in here? And they told me well, I was secreted. Like, that sounds kind of funny. I, I fear for father's life. The servants are full of wrath. Filled with hatred for every one of us. They've since come for every one of the companions I escaped with. They haven't spared a soul. I fear it's no different at Castle Morn. Please, I implore you. Would you mind taking a letter to my father? At the castle, my soul wishes that he escape. Even if his honor should be the price. Please. I just want him to be safe. Well... I can bring this letter to him. I mean, he could do what he did with you, and he could just shit himself out of the castle. <laughs> but, all right. Thank you. Dearly. Then please, take this. All right. Deliver it to my father, who remains in the castle, if you please. So, this is kind of a tragic quest line. It's very brief and sad. You take this letter there, and you go, and... You can, I have yet to find out if there's a way to save both of these two, because everything I try results in her being dead when I come back, killed by the things that I kill on the way there, which is disappointing, but I'm still trying to figure out what I can do differently. I'm going to try something completely different on this run, and that's one thing I'll have you guys please not spoil for me in the comments is I want to try to do something differently this time to figure out what I can do to keep her alive and try to reunite her with her dad if it's possible. So now let's hop on torrent. Let's make our way down through here. Grab our mushroom, grab our torrent food. 
Okay. So this. This situation right here is one important instance of why you buy a bow. With lots of arrows. Because we're going to do quite a bit of pulling here. So I'm going to pull this dog. And this is going to be like... Wow. He bit right around my shield. Dick. This is going to be like the next five minutes of our life, is dealing with this bullshit. The dogs. So, I'm going to pull this Gondrick soldier. And there's only a couple of them. There's that guy, and then there's another one sitting over there, which looks like a crashed treasure chest. We'll steamroll this guy. And then we'll pull the other one, too. No, that guy. Thank you. And thank goodness we have plenty of range. And we'll deal with the giant very, very last. Come on. Come on. You know you want to. Okay, I'm not going to do the parry animation or the, the repost animation just to save you guys a little bit of headache. Easy kill. Now we'll get this one. Yeah, that's it. Row, 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 row. Easy peasy. And again, if you reach a section like this where there's like bushes and it's hard to see and whatever, just hit your lock on button. It's going to swing your camera around and probably give you a headache, but I mean, it's worth it because... You never know. There could be like a dog or something hiding in the bushes. And I carried mail for a living. And I know how shitty it is to be bombarded by a dog that was hiding in the bushes. So use your lock-on button because lock-on sees all, even when the eyes do not. Ay. Damn flail awkward angles. And one at a time. That's what I recommend for this part. One at a time. What the hell? Suddenly it doesn't want to work. It doesn't matter, though. <laughs> if you pull more than one at a time, it's just they can flank you. Like, the dogs can attack you from multiple angles. And your shield can only block in one direction. So, be smart. And the, the giant will not aggro unless you get right up on him. So, we are free to kind of explore around and look. Don't forget this. The Morning Star. This is a great bleed weapon for strength builds. And it does strike damage. So if you don't have the dexterity to use the Morning Star and you want something with bleed and strike damage, it's going to be really good against most of your early on enemies. I highly recommend the Morning Star. So let's sneak up on this guy. Strip of white flesh. I don't have any exalted flesh. No, I do not. All right. So look up in my in my health bar. You see that square with the arrow pointing down? That is the effect of this. The Baldkin's Blessing. This is what we got from Hugging Fia. And it costs you FP. It's a one-time consumable. And it will increase your poise. Which, poise is important, it's highly applicable, well, I can't even talk right now, it's highly applicable in a lot of situations that require you to have some kind of hyper armor. So, my best bet with this guy is to just get maybe like a... Try to get the bleed on him. There we go. So now he's got the sword. I'm going to show you how to fight a giant on horseback. So what you want to do is you want to wait for the attack to happen, right? You don't want to be anywhere near him when he attacks because look how long the reach is. You see that? So get your hits in, then get away. This attack will cause him to run forward, I believe. No? Okay. That's fine. B! 
There we go. That's the one. Yeah, all right. So, ideally, that's kind of the attack you want him to do, is the one where he runs forward, because it leaves him wide open afterwards, and you can get a few hits in on him. That one will leave his head open, and please go for the head if you can with those guys, because hitting them in the head will give you an opportunity for a, a repost. It will stance break them. And you'll notice you can kind of weave in and out of their legs. It's really cool. Like, you can be super nimble on Torrent, and you can avoid damage in all kinds of different ways. You see how I, like, double jumped over the shockwave? And then got fucking stomped in the face? <laughs> Alright. Let's finish this. Okay. It's really nice having four flasks instead of three now. Okay, and that should be the first half of the area. Nice. So, this is a new enemy type. Let's take a look. These demi-humans have this big cleaver and these kind of wings and these tails and uh, other kinds of growths coming off of them. They have, like, chicken wings and... Like, eagle wings and snake tails. I don't know. They remind me of, like, chimeras, sort of. There's a lot going on here. And these guys look scary. They're literally chopping the dead to pieces. And this, as we can see from the destruction that is wrought around us, uh, there's dead Godric soldiers everywhere. There was definitely a huge fight here. And these guys are chopping up the dead, it looks like. We're finishing them off. We're going to treat them just like we would anybody else. We're going to pull them one at a time. And I highly recommend using the guard counter against these guys. If they do it. Well, if they hit your shield, that is. He completely missed me, but... We'll try with another one. You'll see what I mean. Damn it. And it's a good thing we bought plenty of arrows. This is exactly the situation I was planning on using the arrows in. If you hit them in the air, you can knock them down. It is super duper useful, especially if they're in numbers. And believe me you're going to run into situations where a couple of them are going to aggro you at once, like two to three of them, and it's not its not impossible to deal with those situations, but it is much easier to fight them one-on-one -on -one if you can control the situation. And then we're going to have a Scarab here soon. Oh, I think I see him, as a matter of fact. We just got the upgrade zone we needed to take our weapon to the next level, too. I'm excited about that. So let's finish this guy. Oh yeah, that feels great. This is such a good weapon. So there's our Scarab. Here's what I want to do with this guy. I want to pick up the shiny first. You know, I wish I had it like the self-control <laughs> to just leave these things alone, but I don't. You don't want him to run that way. That's going to be the direction of the other enemies. You want to get behind him? And we want to attack him from this side, so he... Well, if you get, if he decides to run away from you, he'll run in that direction, which has no enemies, because we've cleared it. And he gave us Mighty Shot, which we are going to end up putting on our bow ASAP. We'll do one more little sweep through here, just to make sure we didn't lose anything. We're good, alright. Not bad. It was nice and smooth. Giant gave us a little bit of trouble. He hit me a couple times, but we didn't get knocked off Torrent or anything, so I suppose we're okay. Okay, so we have our next Grace up here. And I want to run up here for a second to go grab this item. And there's dogs up here, just be careful. A rainbow stone. <laughs> I'm honestly not worried about these dogs, like, at all. I don't care to fight them. What I want is up here. We're going to grab this before we deal with the grace. So with this item, I'm just run through the poison cloud. You won't get poisoned as long as you keep moving. Okay, a 
we'll go over here. Any dogs that were chasing us will run right off that cliff. It's very satisfying to watch. Let's see what's back here. Probably hiding something, right? It's a FromSoft game. Hey! Nice. So let's climb up here. Let's see what's going on. Now there are generally enemies waiting for you at the top of these, almost all the time, so immediately put your shield up when you get up here. But in this case, we didn't have to. We got that stupid hat again. Give me the goods. Hell yeah. Hand ballista. And then we got ballista bolts. So this thing is mega cool. Uh, requires 30 strength. It's got a hell of a requirement. What do I hear? I knew I heard something coming. It really pays to play with these Sennheisers, I'm telling you. These things are so damn good, I can hear everything. Anyway. Requires 30 strength. An unconventional ballistic device modeled on a weapon used to besiege castles, only capable of firing great bolts. Perfect for reckless acts such as storming a castle or facing an entire army alone. This shit. Look at this thing. You have to two-hand it just to use it. Like, there is no one-handing this thing. And... Oh. You can use it on Torrent. And it fires these. It fires these Great Bolts, right? Even two-handing this thing, I still don't have the stats to use it. But that doesn't matter. I don't think it's going to affect the damage at all. Uh, we're going to take a look at this thing anyway. And I'm not going to bother with that. I'm just going to drop down. Because there's stuff here that can break my fall. Let's walk out here for a second. Okay. Let's test it out. <laughs> you see? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's pretty fun to use. It is absolutely ridiculous what you can do with it. Okay, and they are now distracted, running over there to come get me. And by the time they realize I'm not there anymore, I'll be halfway to Mexico. So we'll pick up these runes. So yeah, wanted to run up there and grab that real quick. Then we'll grab this item as well, where these demi-humans are. A ruin fragment. They make monkey sounds, man, and these guys are not hostile right now. Strange. Okay. So we'll grab this grace. We're not going to rest at it. We're just going to grab it. Okay. And we want to head back over in the direction that we came from, which is over here. Atrina's Lily. Don't mind if I do. Fuck you, dog. So this is the direction we want to go. And that right there is our next move. Ladies and gentlemen, Knight's Cavalry round two with a different weapon this time and more health, savagely more attack. That guy has our next weapon. So I cannot level up, but that's fine. Where is he? There he is. And we've got another nomadic merchant right here. Before I fight the Knight's Cavalry, I may as well talk to this guy just so we can get this out of the way and focus on the fight. So this guy, he sells your first crossbow. Remember what I said about cracked pots. Buy these every single time. He also sells the scale armor, which, eh. Here's another note, demi-human mobs. And here's the item I was looking for. This is the Crimson Amber Medallion. I swear this was at the Finger Maidens before, but... Whatever, I'm buying it. It raises your maximum health, and it doesn't cost you a talisman slot or anything like that. So, he sells Tier 2 Smithing Stones. This is big. We have plenty of runes on hand, like the consumable ones that we can use. 
and I think we should buy these once the fight is over. And it's better to go into this fight without a bunch of runes because we might die. <laughs> Alright, let's do it, man. Do you see that thing? Do you see that big scary mace? He's, uh, he's a little bit different than the other one. Fight's the same, right? Like, punishes moves as soon as he swings at you and whatever, but, uh, you're gonna, you're gonna do the swing. That's it. Ooh! There we go. And just like the other one, after he does the jump, he usually flees. And you can take full advantage of that chase down attack that he does. Ow. There we go. I really want to try to hit him more often than the horse on this fight, unlike the previous round. I would like that. Oh no, we're both pinned. Come on, man. Ooh. It just occurred to me that I... No, I grabbed the grace. I'm good. Okay. For some reason, I thought I didn't. Come on, you're gonna swing. And whenever his horse does the stomp like that, I really, really don't recommend trying to hit him. There we go. That's fine. I'll take that hit. And then he's gonna run. Yep. There we go, not bad. I'll have quite a bit of his health down by the time the horse dies. That's a good sign. We might even be able to kill him before he resummons it. That's that's the goal. Damn it. Alright, come over here. Maybe. <laughs> What are you gonna do? I can do that too. Shit. There we go. Yeah. Mmm. Oh shit. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Give me the booty. Yeah, give me the booty. You ain't summoning another horse, pal. Yeah. Eat shit. You barricade shield? <laughs> and the Knight Rider flail. Let me just talk about this thing for a second. You see why we're pushing for 24 dexterity, right? This thing is gruesome. It gives you a C scaling and dexterity right out of the gate, which is good because this has D in strength, D in dexterity. This one has an E in strength, so your scaling and your strength suffers a little bit, but it gives you a much higher scaling and dexterity, and it's good. It's good, 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 I'm telling you. Once we have the dexterity for this thing, it's gonna rip, and it causes bleed, but it's just better. Look at that thing. Oh, yeah. It's got, like, multiple on it. Ours only has one. This one has three. Oh, yeah. And then, when we're feeling really fucking mean, we can do this shit later. Fucking, well, it's not gonna let me do it. There we go. When we're feeling really mean later... 
We can power stance these damn things, and that's going to be disgusting. I'm telling you. I'm telling you right now. It's going to be great. Okay. So. Here's what we're going to do. Before we end this episode, which we're ending on a great note. We took down our second knight's cavalry, which dropped a very important weapon for this character. Let's go up here first. And that is what we want, even though I completely fucked it up right there. Alright. Let's try again, and this isn't for nothing. We do want to get up in there, because when we do this part, it's going to give us another... What are they called? I'm going to keep messing up the name. Memory Stone. It's going to give us another Memory Stone once we get into that place. So, just to open the map, give you guys an idea of where we are. We are just pushing further south. Is all we're doing. And we're going to find the map piece in just a second. It's going to be right there. And then things will open up for us. But. We fall down into this thing. Here we go. Okay. Great turtle shield. Then this as well. The warming stone. So the warming stone heals you. You drop it on the ground, and it does cost a little bit of FP, but it will heal you, and it will heal your summons or people that you're playing with online. It's really cool. It's really nice in a pinch, too. Like, when you're out of Estus, and you're, well, I'm sorry, Crimson Flasks, when you're out, and you're just in a bad situation, you're gonna want that. I promise you. Okay. And then there's no getting onto that part of the roof, unfortunately. You will die if you try. So, before... You know what? We may as well squeeze this in since we're already up here. We're going to work this into the episode. <clears throat> Man, these last two have run a bit long. And I know that a lot of people really prefer the longer... Ignore me. I know people prefer the longer type episodes... But, uh, I usually try to keep these, like, right in an hour. So the way you get into these towers is the door is sealed. If you try to go in, there's nothing you can do to get in. Like, it's, it's blocked. So how you get in is you read these. Seek three wise beasts. Here's one, right? You find one, you attack it. And the wolves are going to make this slightly annoying, but... This, I believe, is the easiest one. Like, these ones are super easy to find. Uh, usually, you need a bow for this, because sometimes they will be in trees or on walls. But we're going to go track these guys down real quick. And they're never super far away. They're usually almost always in the surrounding areas. Like, they're usually really, really close by. And they intentionally make these ones easy. Because this is going to be like one of, if not the first one, that you find. Because there are several of these towers that are identical in the game. So let's run down this way. We're going to grab this grace, since we're going to end up being down here anyway. Oh boy, there's something going on over there. Hi puppies. Who else? May as well murder these guys. I mean, they're just going to get in the way. Proc the bleed on the leader. You dare? God. I sound like... Uh, I sound like Darkseid when Batman foiled his plans. You dare? Hey! Would you look at this? Here's an interesting opportunity to show something off. We have an owl, right? Like I said, there's different kinds of burdens in this game. Here's an example. An owl. His eyes are glowing, so we should get 
extra runes if we kill him. And as before mentioned, we get the slumbering egg. There's something nasty going on over there. I don't like that. No thank you. I'm going to focus on trying to find these stupid turtles. Now, part of me thinks that they probably don't stretch down this far. They very likely don't, but I'm going to check anyway. I'm going to go under here, see if there's an item or anything tucked away. Doesn't look like it. Got some bats. Alright, fine. I'll bite. What the hell's going on over here? Oh, that guy. Lame. Oh! Sorry! I didn't mean to insult you! <laughs> Alright. Ah! They threw a rock at me! How fucking rude. Okay. Um, I just want to clear this part real quick. And it is very important to kill these guys first before you start trying to fight the boss. I'm telling you that from experience. So now, I'll do this. A little bit of mounted fire combat. Oh, don't you dare dodge me, pal. Yeah, your gravity magic is uh, not going to get it. Okay, I would like to try to get a bleed on this guy. And he has a lot of poise. There we go. That wasn't so bad. And then down in these crevices, you want to loot these. Well, it's not in this one, but in some of these. Maybe not. Oh, I'm thinking of the different area. Okay, I'm thinking of a different area in the uh, the Altus Plateau. Never mind. Ignore me. There's an area very similar to this with the same kind of bullshit happening in the Altus Plateau. And uh, there's a very nice material that you want to loot. And it's uh, inside those crevices. Okay, so we're above the bridge now, and the girl that we talked to should be right down below us. So I'm going to run back this way, keep getting sidetracked. I think I need to learn how to prepare better. I need to learn how to... Another owl. Need to learn how to focus my energies better so I can actually have, like, an hour-long episode. Because <laughs> that's already kind of a lot of time to ask of somebody, right? Like, I feel like it's asking a lot to ask someone to commit to watching you do something for an hour, right? Even though you theoretically don't have to watch it for an hour straight. You can always start it and come back, but still... Okay, so let's do our due diligence, and let's grab the grace in here, just so we don't forget that we were here. The Impaler's Catacombs, so I don't recommend doing this one right now. This one is on the more difficult side. It's not, uh, I wouldn't say, like, from a... A general perspective it's not like hard it's like not, not one of the hardest dungeons but compared to what we've experienced already in this playthrough six episodes in that one is definitely a little bit tougher so we're not gonna we're not gonna worry about that one just yet we're gonna go back up here we're gonna stay on task and we're gonna find these damn turtles Yeah, that's right. That thing, like, totally pushed me off my path. Like, the hell? 
Okay, we'll get rid of you. And then what we want to do when looking for the turtles is you want to look up. I hear something. It's messing with me. Anyway. You want to look up? Make sure you're not missing any. Because <clears throat> sometimes they have the audacity to put them in trees and stuff, which is kind of annoying. I wonder if they put one up in there. I bet they did. Here, let's jump off. Let's go see if they did. Because we found the turtle shell shield in there. No? Well, that's crazy. Okay. I'm surprised, actually. <laughs> Some of these trees look strange. Like, they, they glow silver. Like, it's weird. Alright, let's go up here. I know there's one very late game where the turtles are literally on the cliffside. Like, you have to look over the edge to see them. And there's also a bug with that quest. I wonder if that bug affects this particular one as well. It's quite possible. So we'll look over the edge just to be sure they're not doing the same shit as they did with the other one. It doesn't look like it. I think we're okay. But I'm not seeing them. This one is a little bit more tricky, I guess. Oh, here we go. There's one. Look at that. Right as I'm about to give up, suddenly whoosh. It just gets that much easier. So I guess what we need to be doing is looking in these bushes. And they're probably all close by, I bet. Okay, so we'll find this last guy real quick. It should only take a minute. Where are you? How do you draw out a spectral turtle from hiding? Ooh, I know! Uh, <clears throat> come out, come out! I'm a goofy goober. You're a goofy goober. We're all goofy goobers. Now listen. Does anybody hear anyone trying to sing along? I can smell you. Mmm. I know he's here. He's right in front of us somewhere. Where are you? They probably made this one intentionally difficult to find. <laughs> but that's okay. We're gonna find him. I know he's here somewhere. They usually don't stretch this far back, though. I'm thinking he's probably not in here at all, but... Gonna look anyway. We found two of three. We can't give up now. So I wonder if what they ended up doing with the final one is putting him up in one of the trees or something. I would believe it. I 
about here. No, doesn't look like it. Yeah, they usually do not put them far away from the tower. They're usually within close proximity of the tower, but what ends up happening is they are hidden really, really well. Like, in this case, they're putting them in the bushes and shit. Like, that makes them pretty hard to see. Because they are, like, a pale blue color. They do glow. Which makes them obvious when you find them, but... I guess, right... I guess for this one, you really have to be right up on top of them to see them. Where are you? I'm sure he's right in front of me. Like, right beneath my nose, I guarantee it. And I'm gonna find him. about to start like blindly attacking into these bushes just in case because what if he's like super invisible Saw the ripple in the water and gave him away. Okay. That only took an eternity, but we've been rewarded. Make sure there's nothing back here. Okay. Usually with these, all you have to do is climb to the top and you'll find a chest that'll give you another memory stone. So we're going to go do that and that will be the place to end this episode because I really I promise you I'm not trying to do this thing where the episodes just get longer and longer I promise I'm not trying to do that bam there we go all right and now what we're gonna do uh, I'd be this guy I believe no it'd be this one okay we're trying to go back to where we where the merchant is. Which is not this one. It's this one. Okay. That's the one we want to start at because we're going to push closer to Castle Morn before we turn back and start going a little bit eastward. But, alright. That, my friends, is a solid episode. We got a lot done. We got a brand new weapon. Can't use it yet, but we will. I will probably pop soul items or rune items to level up just so I can have the dexterity for this thing. It'll be our new weapon. And uh, then we can even power stance them. Get really nasty. Fix that. But uh, all right. We're going to push closer into Castle Morn that direction as soon as we start episode 7. But um, with it being the time I'm recording this is Sunday night. Uh, I'm a Monday through Friday guy. So my uploads are probably going to be a little bit slower throughout the week. And then on the weekends, I will try to blast out three or four at a time, as I did these past couple days. And that's probably the, the general pattern of these uploads for the time being. But thank you guys so much for joining me on this painfully long episode of Elden Ring in-depth playthrough. I've been your faithful host, Let's Play Dark Souls HD, and I will see you guys in the next video.